Hi everyone, and welcome to our video on exponential decay. So there's not much difference in what we were doing. So if you're following these videos that I've been doing, we were looking at limited growth. So it's, it's growth versus decay. The only thing that changes from these problems to the next is that our, our constant is a negative. Okay, and it actually, let's, so I, I had a different video where I marked these already, um, but it's based on this value. So this, this one's negative, so that means it's actually decay, whereas this one is positive, so that means it's a growth. Okay, so, but otherwise, that's the only difference in the problems. So it's still breaking it down by trying to find an exponential function and working with it. So again, they might give us a, a derivative equal to something right here but then we change it to an exponential function. Okay, and, and like before, we said sometimes they change the letters like that, or they might use in, and then either K or R, but either way, this first letter, whatever they're using, is the initial population. Okay, and then now we have this new rule. If K is positive, so K greater than zero, that's growth. If k is less than zero, it's decay. Okay, again, nothing else changes though. Okay, so hopefully it's pretty nice. So let's see how it works. So on this example, it says oxygen 19 has a decay rate. So they underline decay, so it's not a growth. So it's decay rate of 2.62% per second. And then notice they just already converted that information. I'm going to box it right here, right, right below. Okay, they change the percent into a decimal, and then there is a negative for the decay already. And then they said, which means the rate of change of an amount A of oxygen 19 after T seconds is given by, by this expression. All right, and so now we're going to break down all of these by converting it into an exponential function. So they say, let A naught represent the amount of oxygen 19 present at T equals zero. Find an exponential function that models the situation. Okay, so we have dA dt equals negative 0.0262a. And the steps that we used in a different video from this format was to say, okay, whatever this letter is, is the function letter. And then they do say a naught represent the initial amount. So back to, let me unbold that. So they're saying put that there, put a naught there. And then e this is our k value, the negative 0.02, oops, hold on, I put the decimal in the wrong spot, 0.0262, and then whatever the other letter is in this problem, it's t, t, like that. There we go. So that is the exponential function that models this, or they might change the left to be a of t, like a function like f of x or, or f of t, but then everything else is still the same. Okay, so they might they might write it like that, which might be better for when we need to plug in actual t values. Okay, so let's see what else they got. So it says, suppose 500 milligrams of oxygen 19 is present at time t equals zero. Okay, so now they are just saying that is the initial amount it says how much will remain after one minute? Well, first, let's just use this to change our equation. Let's change what I'm currently underlined into 500. So they're saying let's do A of T equals 500 E to the negative 0.0262 T. And then now they're asking how much will remain after one minute? Okay, well, let's see. We got to be careful here. Because notice in their wording, they say per second. So after one minute, we need to convert it to match the seconds. After one minute should be T equals 60 seconds. Okay, so careful for their little traps there. So, so I underlined or I highlighted it after T seconds. Let's even highlight it here after T seconds. Okay, so we need everything to be in seconds. Okay, so now we're ready to go though on this. Okay, so now we can plug in 60. And then we'll just plug the rest of this into the calculator. Okay, so we have A of 60 is, is 500. 
e to the negative 0 0.0262 times 60. Okay, so a of 60, just getting that ready, equals, so that right there we just need to plug into a calculator. Okay, so I've got Desmos again ready, so it's 500 e to the, let's use parentheses, negative, oops, it moved it. There we go, negative 0 0.0262, and then they said times 60 for 60 seconds. Okay, so 0 0.0262 times 60, just double checking, yep, looks good, negative 0 0.0262, and we get 103.8. Okay, so we have 103.8 milligrams left after 60 seconds. Okay, so it's, it's going away pretty fast. Okay, so and I just, I wanted to put the words in there. Okay, and then number three, it says, what is the rate of change of the amount of oxygen 19 after one minute? All right, so similar deal, rate of change, again, means we need to do a derivative. Okay, so we've got our original function. Let's just rewrite it real quick. A of t equals 500 e to the negative 0.0262t, and then do the derivative, so a prime of t would be, again, the derivative of an exponential is itself, so we're just going to write 500 e to the negative 0.0262t times the derivative of the power. Well, the derivative of the power just requires the power rule, which would eventually give us negative 0.0262. And then now we can plug in 60, and we'll just change our t into 60, so 500 e to the negative 0 0.0262 times 60, and then after all of that, times it by that decimal right there. Okay, so let's see. So we'll plug this all in. So we've got, again, this I already have again. So notice that's becoming common if you've been watching the, the videos in order, but I just now need to multiply it by um, negative 0.0262. Okay, and we get this. So we get negative, uh, let's say 2.8. So we'll round it to the nearest uh, tenth. So negative 2.8. Okay, and we're going to write that over here. So a prime of 60 is negative 2.8. Right? Let me double check. Yep, okay. Okay, and so what that means. Again, it's a rate of change, um, and it's a negative, so that means the amount of oxygen 19 is decreasing, because that's a negative value, is decreasing at a rate of 2.8 milligrams per second at t equals 60. Oh, put t equals 60 seconds. Okay, so that, that's what that means in words. Okay, remember the negative on our derivative means it's decreasing and amounts is decreasing. Okay, so let's see this last part. Oh no, there's two parts. Number four, after how many seconds will half of the original amount remain? All right, so if they give us this, so after how many seconds will half of the original amount remain? Um, this is something that looks like it's connected to a half-life. Okay, so we'll, let's break that down also once we hit this answer. All right, so still just to write down the same equation, so we just continue to use it. Okay, so the A of T equals 500 E to the negative 0.02. 62t was our original function, and they say after how many seconds, so we're solving for t, solve for t when half of the original amount remains, when we have half the original amount, well the original amount was 500, so when we have, when a of t then equals 250. Okay, so if the original amount's 500, half of that is 250. So now we'll sub this in. So this whole thing is 250 equals 500 e to the negative 0.0262t. 
and then we'll divide by the 500. Okay, and that gives us, we'll do a decimal, it gives us 0.5 there on the left. Equals e to the negative 0.0262t. Okay, so we need to solve for a variable that's in an exponent. To do that, we use ln on both sides. And that gives us on the left, okay, so I need to rewrite it over here. It gives us ln of 0.5 equal to, so ln of ln and e cancel to leave us with just the power, so negative 0.0262t. And then we'll divide by that negative 0.0262. So we divide by that to get t by itself. And then that will give us, so I just need to type this on the left into the calculator. And that will give us, after how many seconds, the it, it will take for half of the original amount to remain. Okay, so back to the calculator, we've got ln. So we've got ln of 0.5 divided by negative 0.0262. Was that it? Let me double check. 0.0262. Yep. Okay, and we get uh, 26 point, we'll do 26.5, we'll round it to the nearest tenth, 26.5 seconds. Okay, so that's how long it takes for half of the original amount to go away. And they might call that a half-life. So the half-life... is 26.5 seconds. So it's the amount of time that it takes for an amount to be halved. So half-life, so halving something, life is based on time. Okay, so that, that's all that means there. So for instance, so if I did t equals zero, we have 500 milligrams. At t equals 26.5, we knew that that was half, 250 milligrams. If another 26.5 passes, so that would be 53 seconds. So 26.5, another 26.5 is, is adding up to 53. That means we would have 125 milligrams left over. If we added another 26 and a half to this, um, that gives us 79.5 seconds. So after 79.5 seconds, we would have uh, 62.5 milligrams and so forth and so forth. So it's just telling us um, how quickly or how slow it takes for half of whatever's remaining to go away. Okay, so the, the biggest half, the, the largest amount is always the first half-life, but um, we can always continue the pattern to keep finding more and more and more. Okay, so now, one more. It says, after how many seconds will 99% of the oxygen-19 have decayed? Okay, so 99% of the oxygen-19 have decayed. Well, let's, let's break down. Uh, let's get 99% of 500. So let's do that first. So 99% of 500 would equal 0 0.99 times 500. Which is, okay, back to the calculator. Okay, 0.99 times 500 is 495. Okay, so they're saying 495 of it has decayed, which means, well, how much is left? Well, one more step, that means 5 milligrams is left. Okay, so we need we need that to help us. Okay, so what we're going to do is so this is this is an amount after time t. So it's kind of like the uh, previous problem where we have a of t is going to equal five, and we're going to solve for t. Okay, so back to the original equation: a of t equals five hundred e to the negative point oh two. Oop, 
messed up where that was again. Sorry. Okay, so negative 0.0262t. So I'm just rewriting it. So I notice I pretty much do it every time. And then now I'm going to um, change this to 5 and continue to solve for that t value. So we have 5 equals 500 e to the negative 0.0262t. Okay, so similar steps. Let's divide the 500 over. And then that gives us, okay, so it gives us one, let's, let's just get a decimal. So I'm going to go to the calculator again. So 5 divided by 500 is 0 0.01. Okay, so we've got 0 0.01 equals e to the negative 0.026. Oop, did it again, sorry. 0.0262t, and then like before, if we need to solve for a variable up there, we'll, we'll use our ln to help us out. Okay, so that means we're left with, so a little out of room, sorry, again, rewriting. We have ln of 0 0.01 equals just the negative 0.0262t, and, and still, same same step as above, so you kind of repeat similar steps each time with these problems as well. But let's divide by the negative 0 0.0262 on both sides, and that will give our t value that we're looking for. Okay, so that left fraction I need to again plug into the calculator. I'm going to copy that one, but let's change it to 0 0.01. Okay, so 170... Let's just, let's just go to the nearest whole number. So 176 seconds. Okay, so after how many seconds will 99% of the oxygen in 19 have decayed? So it takes about three minutes for it to almost all decay. Okay, so this uh, these types of decaying with elements and the half-life... Um, the, what, what probably the most useful thing for it, which we did not do in this problem, I just did uh, oxygen, but they have the carbon dating. So you can tell how old something is. So like um, something from a, a million years ago, they could figure out by a similar process that we did here. Okay, but um, that's it for us for this problem. Okay, so if you do have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.